There are very few topics that get me quite as excited as Notlon does, for two reasons. The first being I yearn to create a black man reacts to Notlon video and see if the use of the Brotherhood is satisfactory to my liking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kidding. And the second is because I get to indulge in my racism towards the dragons, as it seems like Genshin Impact may have purposefully leaked what part of the Archon Quest in Notlon will be, which is defeating evil dragons. For those unaware of what I'm talking about, yesterday we made a video talking about the Samsara theory, and central to it was a piece of paper written about the Narcissan Croy Ordo, which states the Narcissan Croy- uh, Oh, fuck this- FUCK THIS WORD, MY NIGGA! Ugh, there's, so, there's so many N's and S's and Z's! The Ordo believes that people continuously refine themselves through Samsara cycles. These include Hyperborea, Natlantian, Remuria, and the first half of the fourth Samsara, Kronaria, which we are presently experiencing. Please take note that these are just names given to these eras by the Ordo based on ancient texts, and this evolution refers to spiritual evolution. There is no intent to antagonize any research results obtained by the Academia. The human spirit undergoes the loss of paradise, the defeat of evil dragons, the original sin and baptism, and and finally, freedom from the gods. I spoke about this at length yesterday, so I'm just going to briefly touch on what that means and why it may suggest what Notlon will end up looking like. I feel really bad that I I, I slammed my, my desk saying Narciss and Cory. Uh, Narciss and Cory, I don't think you're a bad word. I just think you're really, really stupid. Really fucking stupid. Anyway, according to this... <laughs> According to this paper, Tevatis had four Samsara cycles, and each one have had their own major events played throughout. During the Hyperborea era, there was a loss of paradise, meant to indicate either the early people succumbing to temptation, or the arrival of the second who came, destroying the unified civilization that existed at the time. Then there was the Natlantian cycle, which was described as a defeat of evil dragons. I'll get into more about what this means later. Following that cycle, there was the Remuria cycle, which saw the original sin and baptism, meant to indicate the original sin committed by Egeria, stealing the primordial DLC to create her own humans, and slash or the arrival of the third descender, which then acted as a baptism or rebirth for Tivat, thanks to their death creating the Gnosis, leading to a new order that had to be upheld. And the fourth cycle, which is the one we're currently living in, was the Kronaria. It's just meant to be Conria, which tried, they tried, they tried to stand up to Celestia, got put down like dirty dogs, but they tried to break free from the gods, which now leads to the Cryo Archon also trying to break free from the gods in her own way. Now, circling back to the Natlantian cycle, the paper wrote that during this period, the human spirit underwent the defeat of evil dragons. Furthermore, a key you get by doing the quest adds more context, writing quotes, the middle circle is the cycle of Natlantian, symbolizing the triumph over the evil dragon, a metaphor for humanity's victory over nature, as well as the beasts within themselves. So at this time, the people of Notlon played a central role in defeating the evil dragon, similarly to how Remuria was where Egeria was when she committed the original sin. The nation of Fontaine would later bear the consequences of this sin, so I expect something similar might happen in Notlon, but who exactly was this evil dragon? Well, in the Samsara video, I theorized that because there have been four Samsara cycles and four descenders, each descender might have come down during a different Samsara cycle, maybe even marking the beginning of a new one, so going in order, it would be Fanes for Hyperborea, the second who came for Natlantion, the third descender during the Remuria cycle, and the traveler for Kronaria. Now there are some, how do I say, kinks, you know, kinky, kinky. <laughs> Kinks with this theory in terms of timing, especially in regards to Remuria having existed at the same time as the Archon War, but because dates aren't given to us and we don't know how long after the Great War of Vengeance the Third Descender showed up, it's all tough to say. Regardless, the focus for this is on the Second Descender who may have come during the Atlantean cycle. Due to this cycle being described as a triumph over evil dragons, I am once again reiterating that a likely candidate for the second who came was that bastard crackhead Dragon King Nibelung. I have a whole separate video dedicated to why I think Nibelung is the second who came, which I humbly ask you to watch. If you're confused as to why I think this, because I'm sure some of you are, as I address pretty much all the arguments in there, what I wanted to talk about was what that could mean for Notlon in the present day. As it stands right now, we know Notlon is heavily involved with dragons. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Furthermore, they are also involved with the Sovereigns, given the one who introduced Nervalette, 
was named Jacques Blanc and sent <laughs> Someday when they return, their true ordeal shall begin. Interestingly enough, Jabba Blank is said to have been entombed with the primal fire. Anyway, thanks to Bishop's description in the archives, we know that, quote, following the fading of the seven sovereigns' power, a new generation of sovereigns is presently being born. While it makes sense that people from Notlon may be sympathetic to the cause of the sovereigns, given they themselves are going close to the dragons, it's also interesting that the paper suggests that they may have played a part in defeating them. Let's not forget that the Notlantian period was described as, quote, a metaphor for humanity's victory over nature as well as the beasts within themselves. Given the true nature of this world as dragons, this once again suggests that humans fought against dragons. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not sitting here suggesting the people of Notlon took turns, you know, running the ones with Nibelung until they sent him to the Shadow Realm. No, no, no. That was a job for Daddy Fanes and our beloved Heavenly Principles. I'm merely suggesting, you know, they, they fought some bishops, you know, doing their part, team effort, and all that, you know. There's no I in war. <laughs> Given it's called the Notlantian Cycle, it makes me think they played an especially large role. Similar to how the Remuria Cycle is named after, well, Remuria. Uh, given Notlon is the nation of war, it also makes sense that they would play a big part in this epic war fighting against the sovereigns. I'm curious, however, if this was the case, how has Notlon come to be known as the nation of dragons? It could simply be they harbor no hatred for the dragons and, you know, business is business, they had this <laughs> war is war. Or it could be they had dragon pets beforehand. I mean, Apep did suggest that some dragons were friendly with humanity. By the time the Dragon King finally returned, the world had irrevocably changed. Some of the dragons have grown close to your kind, and have forgotten all about our hatred from when the world was taken from us. Furthermore, this also helps to clarify Nervalet's point that he would not be welcome there. Maybe they just like some dragons and they, they don't like other dragons. Given Jabba Balink is referring to all the sovereigns in his statement, I suspect the Pyro Sovereign will also play a large role, but I'm curious. Everyone has their own theory as to who is being revived. Hell, I said Capitana wants a piece of that Lazarus pit, but could it be the Pyro Sovereign? Could the people of Notlon be so sympathetic to the dragon's cause that they would go so far as to revive a sovereign? Unironically, that still doesn't sound as drastic as giving a sovereign his full dragonhood back like what happened in, in Fontaine. There's been plenty of sovereigns just chilling into that over the years. It's not like reviving one breaks the balance of power. However, Nervalet is the first sovereign since the arrival of the Heavenly Principles to regain his full dragonhood. Now that, now that is scary. Ultimately, Given there are many tribes in Notlon, it really wouldn't surprise me if some were devoted to the Pyro Sovereign as opposed to the Pyro Archon, similar to how the Aramites liked King Deshrat over Greater Lord Rukadavatsa or Lesser Lord Kusanali in Sumeru. This could help to explain the elongated war that has been plaguing them for quite some time. Finally, it seems like Notlon will be focused on either the fallouts of defeating the evil dragon, or they might defeat another evil dragon. And in this case, it could be the Pyro Sovereign, but we will see.